Hello, replay viewers. I made a fairly nice trip today and got to where I am. Actually, that's a bit of a lie. I got to up here. I had great plans for tonight. There's a... Hi, Mindy. There's a, a town landing up there and there's no room. So no tying up and no going to Chinese dinner tonight. So I had to come out here. Yep, this is the East Coast. This is the this is the Portland that I know. And actually this is South Portland. It is kind of interesting. This is the first Portland. But when people tend to talk about Portland, it's about the other one, the pretender, the upstart. Hi Jen. So beautiful Portland. I usually don't come in here on my way up the coast. I can go farther. But on the way down, and there's all these lines in the way, I have to stand up here just to give you a view on that side. Of course, the sun's being harsh at this time of the afternoon. Um, but staging here means it's a shorter trip down the coast, off and into the wind. Hopefully that's not the case tomorrow. We'll, uh, we'll see. And... Yeah, this is this is Karen's spot. She likes to see it. She gets she's seen it many times from from shore, but not too often from the water. So water temperature, I happened to have checked a minute ago because I was curious about my depth and my fish finder also shows the water temperature. And as I was coming along, the ocean was 59, but in here it's 63. Woohoo, right? You wouldn't want to go swimming for too long in any case. But uh, the tide's almost out. And that probably means the uh, the water is has been receiving maximum insulation. So it's it's been warmed up by the sun. And by the tide being out, it's probably down 10 feet. You can see the rocks are showing. Uh, you can see where the mud is. Here's more mud over there. Pretty much this entire harbor was a mud flat. So it's either very shallow like over there or it's 45 feet deep because they dredged it for shipping. This, uh, this bridge, I'm surprised it hasn't opened yet, but it usually opens at least a couple times when I'm here. I've been here since uh, early afternoon. Um, one thing that wasn't the case is there's often one or even two oil tankers down yonder. You can see the tanks. But no oil tankers today. So maybe no reason for moving uh, petroleum products by, uh, by tugboat and barge. It's not, uh, not a hopping place, but there is activity. Yeah, Casco Bay Bridge. That's the million dollar bridge. They replaced uh, an older one that was much lower and they built a little uh, town wharf, town dock, where the old bridge used to, to cross over. So it's good use of the old, uh, the old roadbed. And very interestingly, if you go up, there's also a bit of train track at the, uh, at the street end of that, that old road. All gone now and the cost of progress, right? So behind me, some kind of a mooring barge. And what, what the real view, real good view is, is the one that's hard to see, because I'm shooting into the sun. So over here is a, a container terminal. It used to be where the fast ferry or even the slow ferry would go from here to Yarmouth, Nova Scotia and come back. You're going to Appledore in the fall. Alan, what Appledore are you going to? And I'm gotten got me very curious. I wasn't reading your, your in between your each other's chats, but now you got me curious. There's only one Appledore that I know of and I would be very surprised if you're going to it, especially in the fall. Um, so the, the ferry hasn't signed one. Are you calling the Alpador Island in Maine? It's part of the Alza Shoals. If you are, what brings you out there? And when, what, what's your definition of fall? 
because I know they close pretty soon. So anyway, that's the old, that's the new container port. The ferry used to come here, and that hasn't been here for quite a while. And then out yonder, there's all kinds of things. That's the one. That's pretty amazing, Alan. Um, there's a floating dry dock with a barge in it, uh, some kind of a fishing boat, looking like it needs uh, getting, maybe it's getting some maintenance right there. Uh, a schooner, tall ship kind of schooner, another fishing boat. Marina, farther, farther out, the, uh, the tugboats go in, they're tied up down the, way in the distance. And over on the right, I know you do, Karen. Over on the right is the, uh, the recreational boats. There's one marina, you really can't, there's nothing to see in here. There's one marina in here with a whole pile of cranes. So it makes me wonder if it's under construction. I think I see a few sailboat masts. I don't know, why would you have three cranes? That's interesting. So that's one marina, it's kind of shallow to go in. So remember, everything here was dredged. And this entrance probably silts in and they don't, uh, they don't have a lot of money to, to fix it. And then there's the, all the boats on moorings and on docks out yonder. So on my way in, I, I developed a few contingency plans and I had to employ the first one, which is where I'm at right now. And how do you know what's a good mooring to use? I'll show you. A good mooring to use is one that is really slimy. Look at all that stuff. Of course, you can't see it. Here, how about on the other side? We'll go across. See, this, this mooring has two lines. I'm only using one. But look at that, that dirty rope. You know, if you, oh, here, here's the scene. Here's the scene. Here we go. So I'm using this line that's to the boat, and there's the second one that I didn't pick up. So I only need one for tonight. It's not really windy. But the line I picked up looks like that line looked like that line in the water and it's slowly been been drying out for the last few hours so anyone that eats salad should have no complaints this is just just like that but I know some people say ew but when you're picking up a, a mooring you have to pick it up and and get it on board and get it hooked up so you can't be squeamish I'm still in Maine I have this this bizarre inclination to put my half half right half wrong main accent on and make fun of all those people from from away if you're born in Maine you're not from away if you weren't born in Maine and you're here you're from away even if you were three weeks old when you moved to Maine you're still from away no I don't see any garbage or plastic in the water um, very, very, very rarely. Uh, I think it's a couple times a year I might see one of those Mylar birthday balloons, but that's it. Yeah, this is very beautiful here. The only complaint I have is you can see how the boat's bobbing around. This is not a quiet spot. Now, you haven't seen a boat go by. Well, let's see. Let's look. No, a little boat did go by. It's up there. But that you wouldn't think that would be too aggressive with its wake. It was just putting along. But I think best state, that's right, Maine's the best state. I think boats farther away go by at high speeds and, and eventually their waves come in and and there's always, little, there's always a little bit of extra motion in here. Uh, years ago I used to pick up moorings out yonder around the corner. A place called Bug Light Spring Point. And oh my goodness, that was a, a very active time until dark. No, no, hi from Switzerland. I am not fishing. This is a sailboat with a big solar array. So I'm just going along in my sailboat. And I got in here this afternoon at about 1, 1.30, hoping to tie up at that dock that's behind me, but but it was full. So I came to this, this mooring ball with the uh, nice, nice green green slimy stuff so I knew nobody was using it um, if someone was using it the rope would be clean and not not full of growth and then of course uh, an unknown mooring you don't know if it's being maintained so 
I went into reverse and gave it a good twice, a good sharp pull to see if anything would break loose and, and nothing broke loose and I'm here. This is a tricky place to anchor because right over here is all dredged for ships and it's very deep and you don't want to put out an anchor in, in the way of, of ships and tugboats and barges. And then over here, because it's dredged, it's very shallow. So, so this mooring that I'm on is probably on the, on the slope of, a, of the dredge to shallow area. So thank goodness for that. I did have a few other options of sneaking another mooring. There's, a, there's an empty one out, out past those, uh, that mooring barge on the other side. And then after that, the, uh, there's a whole pile of them in the, in the distance. You've met sailboat people and nobody fishes. Uh, the trouble with catching a fish... Now, I've seen people do it, and somehow they manage. Um, but one, you're not going to... If you're sailing, you're not going to be able to stop your boat and deal with the fish. You have to, to bring the fish in as you're going. And then the other problem, which is, I think, a, a bigger problem, but people do get around it somehow, is on motorboats, you clean the fish on the back of the boat where there's a, a platform, and as you cut the head off and whatnot, you just flick all the, the parts you don't want over the back of the boat. And the sailboat, it's just, there's just too much going on. You can see back here, it's, it's really not made to be a fish cleaning station. Plus it would start to stink it up. So, uh, so cleaning the fish is a little more, more complicated and then washing up and you don't want your boat to start smelling like a dead fish. So you have to do a good job of, of, of cleaning and motor boats that go fishing, um, it's easy for them to, to clean off and wash off and, and they probably do end up smelling a little bit and nobody thinks twice about it because it's a fishing boat and not a sailboat. Uh, personally, I don't like the smell of, of, of dead fish. So, so there the, several reasons for not wanting to fish. Um, but oddly enough, I don't mind a bit touching a slimy, slimy mooring rope. Ow, I just tripped my foot. I stepped the wrong way. Look at this lovely, lovely bit of, of sea growth. That, that growth is actually the mooring rope. That's the second rope of two. And the one that's attached to my boat now looked like that when I picked it up. So I had to pull the whole thing up like that and hope there was an end with a loop in it. Sometimes these things have been sitting out in the winter and the ice has chewed them up or the end's been, been uh, damaged. So then one has to maybe try the other, try the other rope. And this is all, all happening while, I'm, uh, while the boat's moving. I'm by myself. So it's a little tricky to, to, you don't want to stop the boat completely because then it starts to fall back. So it's a little tricky to go up and grab the mooring as you're still coasting just a little bit and hopefully I've, uh, I've nailed it as they say and, and arrived at the front of the boat in about the right position. Uh, here there's just a slight bit of, of current, right now it's still running out. Uh, what's the wind doing? I'm basically weather cocked into the, into the breeze now. So this is the good wind direction and I think this might be a sea breeze which will quit when it gets dark tonight. Can you hear all those uh, seagulls? There's quite a little group of them over here. And I can hear the, the, the junior ones squealing. They're the ones that are, are, yeah, you can hear them. The junior ones are, are from this year's group of eggs. And when they're smaller, they, they squeal to get food. And then when they're out of the nest, hello Clint, when they're out of the nest, they, they still squeal hoping to get food, but they're sort of on their own too. So here's, that was South Portland, here's, here's Portland on the other side of the harbor. And then if, by any chance, something large wants to, to come through the bridge, I'll try to scope it. There's a, um, let's see if I can do this gracefully. No, it's going to be blurry. Off in the distance, you can see there's a, 
a schooner coming in under sail. There's an excursion boat that goes out and it's coming back in. But that's too much too much zoom for my for my shaky hand. And you can see how this this boat's there's nothing that's gone by recently, but you can see how I'm still bobbing. This is how this is how the harbor is until uh, until nighttime when things seem to quiet down. So it's not my uh, not my choice of stops for any length of time, but but it's just to stop for one day and one night and and keep going. It's a, a good one. So that's it for now, folks. Looks like I've lost some viewers. Uh, over here is the Coast Guard station. I'll I'll leave you with that. And if I see a um, something that's going to open the bridge up, maybe I'll be able to scope it too. So everyone, thanks for uh, watching, and we'll see you next time.